What's up guys, how you're doing? Welcome to another video and welcome to another Tutorial Tuesday. That's right, today I'm gonna share with you a trick which I didn't know was even in Lightroom for ages after it appeared in Lightroom. And actually, the more people I speak to, there's a lot of people who don't know you can even do this in Lightroom. And so maybe it's Lightroom's best kept secret. And I think you're gonna find this one really useful because I certainly have. In a minute, we're gonna jump into the computer and I'm gonna show you what I'm talking about. Before we do that though, I'm gonna ask you guys to do a couple of the usual things for me. Hit that like button, hit the thumbs up because it helps me out loads and loads on my channel. I really, really appreciate it. Don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already. Subscribe button is right down there. And whilst you're there, why don't you leave a comment to let me know what type of thing you would like me to include in one of these tutorial Tuesday videos. Hope you guys are enjoying these like mini short tip videos. Hopefully they're useful. Comment below and we will get your topics included in the future episodes. Okay, so today's video is all about using range masking in Lightroom. Now, if like me, you're thinking, range masking in Lightroom, then this is definitely a video that you're gonna like. This is a cool one. I've seen other tutorials on YouTube about this, but quite a lot of those tutorials kind of show you how it works, but don't actually show you how to use it. Cause that's one of the things that is the most complicated. You get into Lightroom, you can see it's there, but you can't like make it work. And I'm gonna show you why that is and show you how to do it today. So look, no messing around, let's dive into Lightroom and I'll show you what I'm talking about. Let's go. Okay, so here we are in Lightroom. Now, first of all, we're just gonna pick uh, an image that we're gonna play with. And I've decided to pick this image right here uh, from the trip that I did to Venice in 2016. You guys might have seen this image before because uh, it's appeared in my videos before. And in fact, it appeared in David Manning's video just recently as well. So that's the finished image, but that isn't how it always looked. And in fact, the original image looked like this, that's the original image right there. You can see it's quite different. We've got a lot of darkness, a lot of shadows up here, a lot of highlights in the sky, and you can see that's fairly different from how the actual finish image looked. So I'm not gonna go through the full edit of this photo, but what I am gonna do is show you this trick to do with range masking. Now this is something that sits within the graduated filter in Lightroom. Now you see in this image down in the bottom left here, it's quite dark, right? It's too underexposed in this corner. Now, of course we could just bring up the exposure probably to about there, but the trouble is then is look what it's done to the top right of this image. It's now too blown out and we don't want that at all. So let's take that back to where we were. So what we could do is, well, we already know there is a tool the graduated filter that would enable us to pull this across here, brighten up that section of the image without affecting the top right. Now that's okay, right? That doesn't necessarily cause a bad job, but even then it starts to overexpose the water down here and the sky in the top left, and that isn't what we want to happen. So again, let's get rid of that gradient filter and let's start again. So here's the trick. Further down, you might see this little section here, which range mask, and it says off. Now, as frustrating as this is, people will think, well, why, why can't I click on this? I wanna turn it on. The reason being is because you have to have a graduated filter there before you can turn it on. So let's just put that filter back in place and I'll show you what I mean. So let's put the filter back in place. Now you see it enables you to turn it on. You've got a choice. You can either choose color or luminance. Of course, we're playing around with exposure, so we're gonna choose luminance. Now, this is the trick that I love with this filter, right? If you tick this box here, show luminance mask, look what it does to the image. It creates this red shade, which basically shows you the areas of the image that are now going to be affected. And if you look down here, this range, you can choose which range of the shadow and the highlights that you want to be affected by the changes you make with the graduated filter. So for example, if we want to, we could reduce the range here and we could say, I don't want it to affect the shadows. And you can see what it's done is it's left a little bit of red up here in the highlights and down here, but not in the shadows. Or of course, as is the case in our example here, we don't want it to affect the highlights, we just want it to affect the darkest areas of the image. And so we're gonna bring it down and you can see how that red changes. You can see the areas that it is now doing. So I'm probably gonna bring it all the way down to about, about 
3840 because now you see it's affecting all the shadows here but it isn't going to affect the sky or the lighter piece of water that we didn't want to affect here. Now I recommend before you actually start changing anything untick the show luminance mask because then you can actually see your image and you can see the effects that your changes are having. If you leave this turned on then you can't really see the effect so well so turn that off before you actually start making changes. Now watch what happens if we start to bring up the exposure on that image. You see what it's doing? It's bringing up the exposure in the shadows without bringing up the exposure in the highlighted areas at the top and the bottom. You see how much better that looks having used that filter. Now you could do exactly the same up the top if you wanted to. You could add a filter up here and we could say, you know what, actually I want to slightly darken this area. It's gone a little bit too bright and I don't want to have it that bright. But at the same time, what we don't want it to do is to have too much effect on the darker areas here because with the sun coming over the ridge of these buildings, this area being slightly darker in shade actually really works. So we're gonna do the exact same thing. We're gonna change on that filter, on that range mask, show the luminance, we can see the areas it's gonna affect and actually we don't want it to touch the shadows at all. So we're gonna bring that up to about 50. There we go, turn that off. And now we see that when we start to bring down that exposure ever so slightly, maybe we bring up the contrast a little bit, we drop the highlights. It's not affecting these buildings, it's just affecting that corner of the sky. And that's it, that is how the range mask works using graduated filters. Of course, with a few other tweaks as well, that can turn an image like this into my finished product, which in my opinion, looked so much better. And that's about it, guys. That is how you use the range mask with the graduated filters in Lightroom. I hope you find that interesting. I found that really useful and I found myself using that an awful lot lately, especially with my landscape photos. It works with other photos too. It doesn't have to be landscapes, but normally I find that my landscapes are one of the biggest examples where I get really bright areas and really dark areas in the same images, especially when you're shooting sunsets, sunrises, things like that. Hope you guys found it useful. If you did, do me a favor, hit that like button. Don't forget to subscribe. If you've got any questions about this in any more detail, anything that perhaps you feel like I didn't quite answer for you, whack it in the comments. I always try my best to respond to every comment that I possibly can. Guys, I hope you enjoyed this quick Tutorial Tuesday video. Thank you very much for watching and I will see you on the next video.